Hello everyone, this is Commander Cream. We are doing Victoria 3 again, and I'm going to do a game not centered around Europe this time. I'm going to go a little bit east. Today we are going to be playing as Afghanistan. The challenge we are doing today is as Afghanistan, we have to subjugate America. Alright, it's a bit of a tall order, but I think we can take care of it. Alright, default game rules, let's go. Afghanistan itself really does not start off all that terribly. They don't have any construction sites, but those are very easy to get a hold of. They have a good bit of resources. They have one textile mill and one furniture factory, which is pretty great. It's better than Albania. And they have, most importantly, they have a lot of coal and they also have some iron. So they have both coal and iron, which are the main ingredients for steel, which we need to branch out in pretty much any direction. All right. However, the biggest problems that we have are in the laws where we have uh slavery and we have closed borders and we also have serfdom national supremacy and all these other awful things like traditionalism land-based taxation no schools which is also pretty awful so we're gonna have to work towards getting rid of all those however the landowners have 61 percent clout so we are going to have to start by using the massive 900 authority we have to bolster the intelligentsia the industrialists we're gonna save the rest for later we might bolster a few more of these if we have any left after we do decrees and consumption taxes first thing i'm going to start researching is going to be academia so then i can do romanticism and then move towards agrarianism for the economic system and get out of traditionalism we do start out with 40 regular battalions however as you can see here they are a regular infantry with no artillery which means they're going to fare very very poorly in combat so we have to upgrade them pretty much as soon as we can but i don't think we're going to be able to pay for them immediately so we're going to wait a minute plus pretty much any of the enemies i think i'm going after initially are also going to be pretty similar te technologically so we shouldn't have too much issue with them so in order to subjugate america as afghanistan we have to either puppet them or conquer them for the most part until they are the same rank as us or below rank as us and then we can puppet them to do that, we are going to have to reach the sea. So my plan for that is going to be to conquer these two states. I think that's going to be the easiest way to do that. I also plan to conquer this state. So I have a connection to the Great Qing, the Chinese. So then I can trade with them for stuff because they have a lot of stuff that they can sell me and also buy from me. The overall plan to get to this state in which I can subjugate America is going to start with the laws. Firstly, we are going to get rid of slavery, and then we're going to get rid of slavery with a different name. Um, also on the list, obviously, get rid of traditionalism. That doesn't, that's not immediate, but if we can get out of that, then uh, that will give us investment pool, which we can work with. We can have our people start buying our stuff instead of us. We also want to get rid of land-based taxation so we can make more money and not just tax the peasantry, since I plan to put most of the peasantry into the factories where they should be. We would also like to get schools. We're going to have to start out with religious schools, and then we're probably going to work our way up to public schools, but it's not really required. I'm just going to do that if I have no, no other laws to pass at the time. Also, we do want to get rid of closed borders, preferably no migration controls or migration controls. Either one really works, but this one will give us access to more people. Um, this isn't going to be an immediate thing that we need to get rid of, though, because Afghanistan does have a large peasant population, which we can make use of. I'm not really going to get rid of monarchy. I don't think I really need to. And to get out monarchy, you generally have to cause a civil war. So I'm just not going to. Um, we might get rid of autocracy. I'm not 100% sure, but I think I probably will. Because it'll help us get the landowners out of the government. And plus, autocracy, while it does give us 200 authority, it does give us a plus 50% government ideology penalty. Which, if you don't know, that damages our legitimacy, which you can see here government ideology penalty minus 16 because armed forces do not like our current law for the army model they do not like peasant levies so they are removing five legitimacy from our government at the moment however we're still at 98 so that's not really much of a problem but when we get in the industrialists and the intelligentsia so we can start passing some of those laws that i previously mentioned then that's going to be a lot more helpful also obviously we're going to want to change the citizenship laws you know stop being racist don't want to change out of peasant levies because it gives us plus 10 percent morale loss and it gives 25 percent more political strength to the landowners my favorite is professional army these other three are good by just like professional army the most it gives minus 10 percent morale loss 
The general economic plan is going to be to build a construction sector first, then an iron mine, which we are then going to build a tooling workshop, which will supply the tools for the iron mine, and then the iron mine will then produce iron, which can be used for the tooling workshop, and then tools are used for pretty much everything, so it's good to start with one of those. Then we are going to build a paper mill, and then we are going to do arms so we can start producing our own guns and stop having irregular infantry. Then we are going to get more iron for those guns, which we are going to be producing. Then we are going to get coal so we can make use of the atmospheric engine, which we will have hopefully researched by then. In order to pay for this construction, I'm going to add a consumption tax on opium. But until we get to that point, I'm going to use that authority to bolster the armed forces and the rural folk. As well as taking these two states here so I can reach the sea and start trading with the world market, I'm also going to take this one so I can trade with the Chinese. I also plan to vassalize Kiva Khanate, I believe is what it would be called, and Bukhara. As for the Sikhs, I do not plan to do anything with them since they are a lot more powerful than me. They have 100 battalions, which is over twice as many as we have, and plus they are higher quality. They do not use a regular infantry, I don't think. Yeah, they don't. So we're just gonna leave them alone. All right, time to switch to five speed and I'll come back to you in 16 years when we can actually do stuff which is interesting. All right, this has hurt me before if you've seen my Albania video, but I'm gonna kick the landowners out of the government so I can start suppressing them. This might bite me later. It did in my Albania video where I started civil war and then I could not actually avoid the civil war because landowners were not in the government. This could very well go very poorly, but I'm going to do it anyway. So in my last few videos, for the most part, I've only really shown war stuff because I feel like that's more interesting in general than economics, but I'm going to try my best to actually show some more of the economics parts of this game because that's more of what it's centered around. Let me know in the comments if you'd rather that I just show war stuff or what I think might be interesting as opposed to, you know, just building buildings, then building this building and whatnot. Geographically, Afghanistan is actually in a pretty decent spot because they're kind of uh, not bordering like the sea or anything. They're kind of isolated from the rest of the world, which means that the rest of the great powers really can't can't really do anything to stop me from doing whatever I want. So that's pretty awesome. I, the Russians, as they have, can side with Kalat here, but they... Uh, can't do anything about it. Academia has completed. We are going to now get romanticism. This is this is a very unfortunate event. Apparently, if we do nothing, then the industrialists are actually going to like that. <laughs> uh, that's unfortunate. We're going to do it anyway, though. We currently have 4,000 loyalists and almost a million radicals. Also, since I've started the game, the standard of living has dropped right around 1. So it's gone from 9 to 8, which is pretty horrible. So I think we're going to have to postpone the industrialization process by a little bit and start getting some more, more grain going so our people will stop starving. We have researched romanticism. We are now going to try to get agrarianism. Yeah, the standard of living is continuously going down. So we're going to have to wait a little bit to industrialize and actually focus on some more staple goods before we can actually start industrializing mainly because we really do not have enough bureaucracy to actually import staple goods from places like china or persia to deal with it so we're gonna have to actually produce it domestically god damn it the standard of living has reached six 5.9 it's still going down 5.6 now i really don't understand why this is happening like the price of grain has shot up for some reason but i'm not exporting it anywhere i'm not sure why like people just all of a sudden got really really hungry that's one trial on agrarianism done i'm gonna try to get intensive agriculture as soon as possible so i can you know solve the problem with the fact that everyone is starving to death all right i figured out why that happened so there was the uh one of those random events that uh yeah, you know, major drought that I just kind of didn't really think about. Just kind of clicked, oh, well, I can't really do anything about it. But it gave me the minus 80% throughput for the uh, for all my wheat farms. So in other words, I'm producing 80% less wheat than I used to, which, you know, kind of explains why everyone's starving. Apparently, looks like the uh, standard of living is starting to creep back up again. So that's good. But uh, yeah, uh, I, I figured out the cause. It was my own. It was my own stupidity, apparently. 
you know, our people are still starving and whatever, but we are producing our own guns now. So this is a representative of how bad our standard of living is compared to the rest of the world. Apparently the people in like middle of nowhere Siberia in untraversable terrain are doing just amazing. But uh, yeah, we're, we, we could be doing better. Look at Luxembourg though, yikes. We've got 200 bucks in the gold reserves. All right, looks like the Indians are having a little bit of trouble. So we're about to have a very scary friend on our border. Intensive agriculture is done. Hopefully this will make it so we can finally feed our people. I just switched both of them over. Now let's see what happens to the price of grain. Yep, it dropped a little bit. Not a lot, but it dropped a little bit. Oh, and we have banned slavery and the price of grain is going down even more. All right, this is, this is, uh, this is a step towards the future. Now we can actually start industrializing and, you know, doing stuff. I forgot to mention this earlier, but we have insufficient taxation capacity in both of our states, which means, yeah, we have minus 50% tax collection in this state and minus 26% in this state. All right. We have just come out of a famine. All right. The road to recovery is going to be slow and will have to be meticulously crafted or we can go to war. <laughs> Never mind. It looks like we didn't even have to. They backed down. So we just got access to the sea. Now I can trade with everyone. So I can do diplomatic actions with these three states, but I can't actually, you know, target them with diplomatic plays. And I find that to be a little odd. However, we can now declare an interest, which is going to be very helpful. So now I can subjugate the people to the north of me. And soon we will subjugate America too. Look at that, Mr. Abraham Lincoln is president. That's very interesting. All three of these states have spent the last few months or a few years improving their relations with me. It's like they knew what was coming because I can't attack them until I have bad relations with them. All right, the first one that's gonna go is gonna be Bukhara. I very, very much expect the Russians to step into this. However, it doesn't look like they have yet. All right, it doesn't look like anyone else is gonna get involved. All right, so this should be pretty easy. If they don't back down, that is. Yeah, no one else has joined, that's great. And we have agrarianism. All right, this just keeps getting better. We have puppeted Bukhara. I'm gonna start improving relations with Russia because I'm gonna be on their border now. However, I do find it increasingly likely that they are still going to attack me anyway, because no matter how good your relations are, they still tend to get involved no matter what. Oh, oh, yep, they really want to do this. Okay. All right, I wasn't even going to record that because I was pretty certain they were going to back down, but I'm going to vassalize Kokan now. And yeah, I looked, yeah, they never stood a chance. Look at that. that. That was seven fronts just a second ago. I have somehow ended up with a lead mine that I have never constructed. Sakim has joined the Sikh Empire against me, guys. It's it's all over now. They're not even connected. All right, our infamy is getting a little high. I'm going to stop conquering stuff for a while. Also, because, you know, there's nothing really left to conquer, I can bastardize these guys or these guys, but everyone around me hates me, so I'm going to not do that because it's very likely that they'll just attack me, and I can't really put up a fight against the Chinese or the Russians. I might be able to beat the Persians, but definitely not the Russians or the Chinese. Serfdom has finally been abolished. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of a gamble and try to go for steel mills a little bit early. Kiva is one of the last of my neighbors that I need to conquer before my other neighbors conquer my neighbors. It looks like the Chinese might side with them. I have better troops than them, so that wouldn't be too much of an issue. And Russia is mobilizing right now, so it's unlikely that they'll join. And yep, it looks like no one else is going to join. That's great. And they back down. We are currently making 7,000 in diplomatic packs from all of our vassals. Our leader is currently loved, which means we have an extra 100 authority to play around with. It appears that the Indians are having a bit of a rough time at the moment. We now have landed boating. Apparently our flag isn't just a black square anymore too. That's actually really cool looking. I'm gonna be honest, most of this playthrough is just gonna be build up before I eventually attack the United States. So a lot of it is gonna get cut out. However, I'm trying to make my videos a little bit shorter anyway, but I'll try to just keep uh, recording the things that are interesting for the most part or have some kind of significance. But a lot of this is definitely gonna be a shorter video because it's not like it's gonna take me a shorter time to actually make the video. It's probably gonna take me a lot longer than some of the other ones.
but there's just not going to be a whole lot of interesting stuff that's going to happen. Most of it is just going to be me waiting for this construction queue to empty out, which is why I'd be more focused on economics in this specific playthrough, as I mentioned earlier, and that's more of what I'd be showing. Our previous prince has died and it has been replaced with this guy who really likes to buy new stuff. I've just upgraded to mobile artillery, so we should have an army which is now on par with Russia. Once we get skirmish infantry, we'll be on par with the United States of America. You know, I was at 20,000 radicals, and then I got hit with a random event, and now I'm at almost 300,000. I have upgraded my government administration buildings to standardized filing system, so we no longer have any taxation capacity problems in eastern Afghanistan. The West is, you know, still an issue, but I have no buildings there, which I am working on. So we are taking a step in the right direction. You know, it just wouldn't be a Victoria 3 video with Commander Cream if I didn't make Madagascar a puppet. So here we go. Do that too. No thank you, friends. All right, boys, we got them. They didn't even put up a fight. It also wouldn't be a Victoria 3 video with Commander Cream if I didn't also vassalize Oman and Venezuela. I'm definitely going to get Venezuela just because why not. But you know what? The Omanis have been very nice to me so far. So I think I'll give them a break this time. I'll, I'll leave them alone. But next time they might not be so lucky. It also wouldn't be a Victoria 3 video if I didn't record it in one session. So I will once again see you back here in about 16 hours. I lied in that last clip, I was actually only gone for 15 hours. Once again, no thank you. I currently have a standard of living twice as high as Luxembourg. You know, that is one way to put it. I wonder where this train is going. Okay, so I just invaded, you know, Venezuela with this dude, alright? And, uh, apparently he's also all the way over here, so he didn't actually land with any troops. There we go. Venezuela has actually grown their economy quite a bit. They're at a million GDP right now. And I completely expect this thing to now just flatline because I am now taking all of their money. The Americans appear to be having a great deal of turmoil. This could be helpful for me later on. So I can theoretically vassalize Denmark. We're gonna we're gonna see how this idea floats. We this this might happen soon. I'm gonna start damaging relations with Russia so I can get them to recognize me because currently I'm unrecognized major power and as soon as I get recognized I'll be able to do a few wacky things. It looks like South Africa is having a bit of a bad time. No thank you, China. But we most certainly will find a way to subjugate you, Mr. America. Scandinavia has been formed, so it doesn't look like my Denmark idea is actually going to work, which is unfortunate, but you can't really do anything about it. You can't puppet a nation which is the same rank as you. So, you know, it is what it is. For some reason, our rank has just plummeted. I was going to do the force recognition play on Russia just a second ago, but apparently we're ranked 27 now. I'm not sure what has happened to cause that, though. It doesn't look like we've had anything really plummet here. Maybe the... Maybe the prestige, but I'm not sure what would have affected that. The rich people are now paying taxes. Now that the rich people are paying taxes, I'm going to piss them off even more by going down to multiculturalism. That's an interesting idea, eh? I'm not saying this means anything. That doesn't mean I'm going to do anything. I'm just saying I'm thinking about stuff. We now have multiculturalism. So I'm invading, invading Zanzibar, because of course I am, why wouldn't I? And my general is taking 47% attrition. This is because these convoys that I have are getting raided. However, they are not getting raided in the Indian Ocean. The convoys, which are causing attrition in Zanzibar, are getting raided in the English Channel. See, the French aren't so scary after all. You know, a lot of time has gone by, but... I'll be honest, like nothing interesting is really happening. It's really just me building up until I can eventually take on the United States. I plan to attack the Russians here in a minute so I can be recognized because right now I'm at unrecognized major power, as I mentioned earlier. And then, you know, I dropped to 27 for no reason. But um, that's pretty much, you know, looking at this list right here, I'm starting to think that 
Forcing recognition from Russia might not be the best idea. Forcing recognition with the Americans, though, that that looks a little bit more appealing. The biggest issue with that, though, is obviously they have a bigger navy than me. They have 44 flotillas, and I have 12. Troops are also on par with ours, except we do have a better medical aid because we actually have access to opium. So the maximum amount of naval bases you can build in any state is 30, at least with the current tech that I have. I can only have 30 flotillas and they have 44. So even if I expand my ship building all the way, I'm still not going to be able to have more than them unless I conquer another state. So guess what we're doing? If take Novagoa away from the Portuguese is what you thought that meant, then you would in fact be right. All right, the Portuguese back down. We have public schools. Our people can start thinking now. All right, it's time to give the women in Afghanistan rights. Never mind. I plan to invade America when I have around 50. Every investment is a good investment. I actually have not had a single one of my vassals actually revolt yet, which is really cool. I said that in the last video, and pretty much immediately I started having two revolts at any given time, just consistently, uh, at minimum two revolts. Most of them were in Sweden and in Norway, which you know was great, because as Denmark I got to repeatedly invade Sweden. A little unsettling after, you know, spending like an hour in this game putting down revolts over and over again and then just having none. It's rather, it's kind of spooky, honestly. We are currently on par when it comes to amount of ships with the United States. However, we have ironclads and I do not think they do. Yep, they do not have ironclads. However, unfortunately, they do have, let's see if I can find one. Yep, they have trench infantry in some of their states. So not all of them are trench infantry, but some of them are trench infantry, which is going to make invading them very, very, very difficult. At the moment, we currently have all the laws that we want right now wrapped up. We got interventionism, finally replaced agrarianism with that. Laissez-faire is also a very good choice. It gives you uh, pretty much twice as much investment pool contribution from capitalists. However, I tend to prefer interventionism because it can be used to invest in pretty much anything and you can subsidize anything you want with it. However, you do not get as much investment contribution from capitalists. We also, we still have the monarchy. There's nothing really wrong with the monarchy, if I'm being honest. All, honestly, all of the government principles are pretty decent. Um, I tend not to mess with them. Um, we have universal suffrage, multiculturalism, freedom of conscience, appointed bureaucrats, professional army, and all these other things you can say, see here, which I'm not going to read anymore because that is going to drag out this video way longer than it needs to be, when I'm pretty sure most of you out there can read. Unlike the women in Afghanistan. <laughs> we currently have 49 flotillas. I said I'd invade at 50, but I'm getting impatient. So I'm going to do something which is probably a giant mistake. And I'm going to invade the United States as Afghanistan. Since they are of a higher rank than me, I will not be able to actually like subjugate them by puppeting them. I'm going to have to either conquer them entirely or conquer them partially until their rank is below me and then puppet the rest. So this is going to be a bit of a process, but we're going to have to start slowly conquering them. Um, usually the best way to do that is to split them up into smaller states by liberating countries. So we can liberate Louisiana, the Cherokee, Texas, the Indian Territory, and New Africa. So I'm, I'm from America, and I have no idea what New Africa is, but that's that sounds like a racial thing. I actually didn't realize this, but they're actually at war with Mexico right now too, so that's gonna that's gonna be really helpful. We currently have zero infamy at the moment, so we can't afford to really go nuts here. I'm gonna start with God's Waiting Room, also known as Florida. We're also gonna get Georgia and Alabama at it while we're at it too. Women have a few rights now. I imagine we're gonna be taking an enormous amount of attrition when this goes down, so that's probably gonna be the uh, biggest threat to our success. And somehow, despite being outnumbered two to one, it looks like the Mexicans are winning, and winning by a decent margin. The embargo begins. And they just never stood a chance. 200 against 
2000 that is disgusting and we we have landed in florida apparently there's no one home either so we're just kind of flying through right now that's awesome all right i do entirely expect this to split into 16 fronts my guess is this is my guess it's gonna be six within four months yeah it looks like they're just annihilating us on land thankfully though we have captured a good bit of territory and trench infantry captures less territory when it wins an attack so if we can hold this we should be able to cap them and actually win without actually you know conquering the entirety of america oh another naval battle and we lost this is what my troop composition looks like by the way if i haven't shown it yet i have skirmish infantry shrapnel artillery and field hospitals all right so the americans only have 20 battalions on this side compared to my and all of my 100 battalions on my side so it's 20 against 20 at the moment it looks like all their other troops right now are in mexico which apparently the russians are also in mexico fighting the americans as it turns out so yeah the odds are really stacked against them i think i think we got a chance this is every american's worst fear no not realism getting a bit you know what, that, that was real on cue. Dude, even the Venezuelans are winning against the Americans. They keep obliterating the NC though, despite the fact that they're using wooden ships and I'm using ironclads. Apparently the amount of flotillas I have has gone down for some reason. You know, that might be the reason why. You know, I'll give it to the game. It's been well over four months and there's still only one front. And... <laughs> The United States has capitulated to Afghanistan. We now own Georgia, Alabama, and Florida. And soon we will own the rest of it. We are also a great power now. Alright, I'll see you all back here in five years when this truce expires. The first revolutionary vassal has shown itself. It's all going to be downhill from here. Bruh. The, uh... The American states are about to succeed. Uh, yeah. I just want to take a second to analyze the, uh, the African-American uprising in Florida. All right. They are led. They are a constitutional monarchy. Led by King Octavius Cromwell. I just, I just want everyone that's looking at this video to, uh, to digest that for a second. Okay, hold on a second. I, I'm very confused. I think this is a glitch in the game's code. Because it seems like it got confused when the uh, African American uprising happened here. And it triggered the American Civil War because this is pretty much all the states that succeeded. So I think this is actually broken and they're fighting the Americans now. Which, you know, I fear they're going to take the care of this for me, but that's that's really weird. I'm wondering if when I finally beat this revolt, because I will, I wonder if I'm going to annex all of this after it's done. The answer to that is no. Our prince died, so we're no longer getting 5% tax waste, but this guy kind of really doesn't have anything interesting down here. That is an awesome trait. Dude, as a ruler, minus 25% decree cost. I mean, this doesn't sound like this would be very good, but this is, this is so awesome. The United States of America wants to reconcile with Afghanistan. Britain apparently has an emperor now. Also, Austria is a presidential republic, and Sweden is a military dictatorship. Dude, America can just not catch a break right now. The Prussians are supporting a Native American uprising. The truce is going to be up any day now. You know, I've noticed with the strategy that I tend to go with where I puppet lots of things, I noticed that they tend to build a lot of art academies, which is really, really odd. Like, usually, like, They'll build a few things here and there. They generally do a lot more uh, agriculture than actual industry. But for industry, they always go for art academies. Like here too. There's two there. There's one there. There's five here. I, it's so weird. They always go 
like it's super consistent too that they always start producing art time for round two i'm going to be liberating new england and i'm also going to conquer tennessee mississippi and louisiana i've been super lucky with generals this playthrough like this guy this guy right here is amazing the Americans have initiated the first battle and they are losing, despite the fact that we have blundered. We have lost the second battle though and we are losing very, very badly. Apparently Afghanistan not helping with the eruption of Krakatoa has uh, increased my infamy by five. So I did a naval invasion and my general then immediately left. It also appears that they have upgraded their ships to monitors and I'm still using ironclads. However, we're still winning anyway. The Americans have hit zero war support, but it's not going to go below that unless they take, take their capital. And we have landed right on DC. That's great. All right, we're starting to do kind of poorly, so I'm going to start conscripting the masses. Wait a second. No, we haven't. It looks like one of my vassals, the, uh, one of my vassals has naval invaded with one division. Oh, I know. It says that I have that division. How did that happen? So this, this is the battle that's going to clear this that I can naval invade. However, it appears a naval invasion has already happened with one battalion that I did not put there. And the general I assigned to it went home. <laughs> Afghanistan has just discovered human rights. And there we go. We have liberated New England and taken several more states. Since this would, uh, take about five or so tries because of how the diplomatic plays work with maneuvers and whatnot this would take about five tries to do with five years in between each time which comes to about 25 years which would put me in 1918 right at the end of world war one so i'm gonna stop right now since it's obvious that i can in fact conquer the rest of the united states so i'm gonna end the video here I hope you all have enjoyed Afghanistan conquering the United States in Victoria 3. If you have enjoyed it, then please leave a like and subscribe and comment something if you really, really want to. If you have any other ideas for Victoria 3 challenges you would like me to do, please leave those in the comments as well. Other than that, goodbye and I'll see you in the next one.